Today we're going to talk about the mechanical tech inspection portion related to templating and Percy. And what we see here is a vehicle that's been stripped of all the bodywork, but we have all the firewalls walls still in place so that we can test Percy first. Percy is a rule set up to ensure the team has designed their vehicle to meet the 95th percentile male. As you can see, we have Percy seated in the vehicle, shoulders are down, the head is back against the headrest, and then the hips are down in a seat. Percy's feet extend all the way to the pedals. To prepare for this portion of the tech inspection, you want to have your seat in its rearmost position and the pedals in their foremost position. And you probably will have wanted to try Percy in your own institution before showing up at tech. Now the way the rules are written, Percy does need to be able to sit in the vehicle and drive it, which means that Percy needs Percy's own seat. Now practically, sometimes this doesn't really work because all of your drivers may be smaller than Percy. However, what I'm going to focus on right now is that Percy does need to sit on something that looks like a floor closeout. Nominally, Percy would have his own pads and uh, driving equipment. Percy's shoulders then sit back here, close to the shoulder harness mounting bar. Percy's head sits against the headrest and can be up to one inch forward of the headrest, but no further than that. We will also look at the headrest and see that Percy's head is at least two inches from all sides of the headrest. Moving forward to the feet, Percy does have a foot and therefore at 36 inches forward of Percy's hip point, you have to have the foot elevated off of the floor and preferably sitting right on the rearmost pedal. In this case, the brake pedal is the rearmost pedal. And you can see that the entire pedal package is in fact sitting in its foremost position. While Percy is in his driving position, one of the things we do is we check to see whether the driver is in a reclined position or not. The reclined position is based off of Percy and not off of your drivers. So in this case, we look at the angle of Percy relative to the vertical. And in this case, Percy is approximately 50 degrees. At more than 30 degrees, Percy is in a reclined driving position. Now, the reason that matters is if the driver is in a reclined driving position, then you must have either two sets of anti-submarine belts, one of which may be adjusted for your smaller drivers, one of which may be adjusted for your larger drivers, such that at driver change, you aren't spending a lot of time adjusting your sub belts. They take quite a while to adjust. Alternatively, you may have one set of anti-submarine belts, but those must have tilt lock adjusters. Tilt lock adjusters, you're much more familiar with them as they sit on your regular shoulder belt. Now, as we look closer at Percy, what I've done is I've put a bar that extends from the rear roll hoop to the front roll hoop. And what we do is we measure from that bar down to Percy's head at a perpendicular. And by design rule, Percy's head must be two inches below that bar. Failure to meet this rule is a failure of Percy. And as the rules are written, that would be a failure to earn a tech sticker. What I have here is the vertical cockpit cross-section. This is a template that's in the rules. You can make your own. The dimensions are given to you in the rule book and they're very easy to make. We made ours out of aluminum so that it's nice and rigid and you'll find that the ones at competition are also rigid. To prepare for this portion of technical inspection, again, all padding, seat, uh, and steering wheel can be removed from the cockpit. And we again have all of our side panels removed here, but the firewall must remain in place. The shifter, if you have a shifter inside of your cockpit, must also remain in place. If the shifter is attached to your steering wheel, then of course it may be removed. The way the cockpit rules are written is this template must be able to pass in a vertical line from outside of the vehicle all the way down below the upper side impact member. That upper side impact member on a tube frame is 350 millimeters above the ground. Now there are monocoque vehicles that don't have upper side impact members, and so we pass the template to a point 350 millimeters above the ground. You can see here that this template right now does touch these portions of the firewall, and that's okay. You can also see, however, that this template, if I lifted it, would hit the steering column. The way the rule is written is the steering column, if removed, must allow clearance. 
And so in this case it would. You can imagine, as a tech inspector, if we remove the steering column, that the template would then clear everything, including this bushing right here. As a practical matter, we don't ask teams to remove the steering column during tech inspection. And so we will either bring the template in from above and down below the side impact member, or we'll start at the bottom and bring it up from the side impact member. And so you can see in this case, and it must come up vertically, this would clear. Things that get teams in trouble is when they, ha they design exactly to the template and then they allow zip ties or wires or controls, vehicle controls, to get in the way. So we ask that you design a little bit wider than the template to give yourself a little bit of extra room. I do remind you that the seat is out, but the firewall must be in. This is the vertical cockpit cross section. Again, this is found in the rules, and it does have labeled in the rules two corners, up and up. So you can see pretty readily that our objective is to pass this along a horizontal line from the front roll hoop all the way to the pedal package, and I'll show you how it's done. Now, for this test, the seat must be in. I'm not going to put it in this vehicle for two reasons. First, the seat is very short in this vehicle and it won't interfere, and second, this improves visibility. However, please note that the seat will be in for this portion of the inspection. What we do is we put the template at some point aft of the rear roll hoop, of the front roll hoop, and then we pass it forward. The template must pass all non-movable wires, padding, and anything else that you might find. So you can see right here, this particular wire has been wrapped in such a way that the template makes it. Now, if the padding cannot be removed, for instance, it's zip tied in place, then it must stay where it is. The template will then be passed forward until you reach the steering column, at which point it will be rotated around the steering column and continued on its journey forward. Many of you will have a steering rack under the driver's legs. You'll note in the horizontal template uh, for, the, for the seat area that it's very specific that that template may not move fore or aft. For this particular template, the vertical template, we have not written that rule, and so there is a little bit of wiggle room for this to go up and down, but that is at the discretion of the inspectors, and they may decide that you must have this go purely forward. The template is then continued to pass forward, and any time it cannot pass by a certain structure, uh, that would be a potential fail, and it passes all the way to the point where it reaches the pedal package. As the rule is written, it must be four inches maximum from the pedal package when it stops, and in this particular vehicle, it reaches almost all the way.